All right, here with James Barr, 2024 inductee into the Texas Track and Field Coaches Association Hall of Fame. First off, congratulations, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for having me and for the honor. I'm overly humbled. 20 years in charge of Texas Relays. Uh, what are some of your fondest memories? Well, my time with you and all those hours uh, of research and everything that we accomplished collaboratively, uh, collaboratively to get together over the years is a huge part of that, right? I'm really proud at the end of the day um, that no matter uh, what singlet you were wearing as a student athlete at the high school collegiate or even post-collegiate level, um, if you were good enough to get into the Texas Relays, you were going to get in, right? And then, uh, as you well know, all the way down to the wire, those, those mile relays, we were always looking to fill lanes. Um, all about opportunities, all about expanding um, the sport, using that platform um, to, to grow it. Um, certainly blessed to have been a part of this association and the board uh, as a part of that. Um, everything that we did, you know, obviously opportunities, adding the high school javelin, um, so much. Um, uh, the, the performances, obviously, um, you know, you were just unbelievable over the years watching those, um, but giving kids a chance to compete. Um, a kid from West Texas or South Texas that may or may not have thought they could ever been in, I think one of the things that I'm most proud of is uh, the fact that if, if you know, uh, if you didn't have a, uh, an open opportunity, perhaps we could get your 4x1 or 4x4 in and you could come to the Texas Relays and you could see the state capitol and um, those kinds of things are, are some of my most favorite memories and we could talk on and on about performances and, and those kinds of things but um, obviously just first and foremost I, I think really if you think about technology um, as well uh, where it came um, the challenges that we um, we saw coming with um, live results um, adding the LED boards um, you know communication um, taking what was mail out communication for relays and, and, and really uh, up upgrading the online um, stuff, certainly the research side of it, um, our, our former research staff with um, everything that we did, and yourself included, with uh, going into TFERS and then with what you've done with mile split and everything. I'm just really, really proud of what we did to help do our part to help the sport. And that's a perfect segue into my next question because from when you started with Texas Relays to where you've elevated it to, what are two or three of the uh, main items that you implemented to make Texas Relays even better, you know, incredibly prestigious? I would say if you look at the numbers as a whole, uh, when I started doing it, we had, uh, it was advertised as over 4,000 or 4,500 athletes, right? So I think number one, uh, how do you make it more elite while expanding it? Um, we looked at, you know, the balance of, okay, do you add a B division in a section or, or you know, can you, can you get creative and add, um, you know, some more invitational sections? We added, as we came, the pole vault's a really big pride point um, in that facility uh, over the years, especially watching the high school girls, um, kind of the advent of that coming along during that time. Um, I would say opportunities, the balance of creating more opportunities, expanding uh, the participation, which also helped expand the spectator attendance, uh, and the balance of, of keeping that or even take, making it more elite as you expanded and grew it um, is the number one thing that I'm the most proud of. Um, uh, ultimately a huge part of that, number two as a part of that, maybe 1A would be the fact that um, as we we did it when you when you talk to the coaches around the country, certainly the state to start with, the, you know, uh, taking care of all of our high school coaches, all of our university collegiate coaches in the state. But we wanted people to, to know that okay, if they're going to raise money on the high school level uh, to spend it and come to to Texas, uh, overkilling within the rules, obviously the experiences that they can have. So, hey, coach, you know, here's here's where we encourage you to go park. Here's how. We, uh, you know, we want that experience to be special. So when you look at it, end of the day, um, if you were good enough to get in, um, you were going to get in. We, I truly feel that, I'm not saying that there was any harm in any way that things were done in the past, but a lot of, a lot of great, tough, but wonderful conversations. I think each and every coach in this state certainly 
can appreciate what we did to uh, know that we were going to do things the right way. Um, we would gladly show them our research books, right? Come, come to the book and see the research book. <laughs> Coach, this is what we did. Were we perfect? No, none of us are perfect. But we made every effort, uh, exhausted every effort from um, really year round, um, spending time on reaching out, emails, communications, follow ups. After the meet, knowing a team may, have, may or may not have had a great performance or may have had a great one, right? Hey, you're. Uh, participation is valuable. I hope you see them back next year. Those kinds of things. Um, so, long, long answer uh, upgrading the quality of participation. Two would be uh, doing it the right way, um, what we define as the right way in our way of doing it. And then three, um, how, do we, how do we grow the sport in this state nationally and on an international stage to, to take it as um, an opportunity to, to say, okay, this is that platform. What are some things we can do, right? How do you take the oldest sport in the world? But as you try to grow attendance, do some of those things, you know, you, you run Bebo across the track or you bring skydivers <laughs> in and you do some of that stuff that okay what what makes it how do we how do we cater to the next generation of track and field fans and get them out and just get them there to see what, what's out there right and, and i feel like we did a great job with that so entering a hall of fame obviously um not only is it quite an honor but it speaks a lot for the people who have supported you so who would you like to thank or who have been your mentors that have helped you to this you know spot where we are this evening? That's the single toughest question and I've thought about it ever since you and, and the Hall of Fame committee uh, decided to award me with this recognition. I, and I think you know my personality, um, I, I pride myself on being a servant leader. One, I like to thank everybody, from the concessions worker or the custodian that helped us make sure that the athlete flow area was good, all the way to the AD, the head coaches, whatever. But if I start at the top, or maybe in my initial experience, obviously very grateful for the lost Dodds, um, Bubba Thornton, Randy Yarbrough, um, the ones off the bat that, that uh, knew me in the equipment world early. But when they needed to make an adjustment, um, Jim Baker, Ed Gobel, our administration at the time, said, James, if we're gonna if we're gonna do this, there's one person on this campus that can do it. And and I gave everything at that point on to making sure that it was uh, gonna be the best that it could be with every day moving forward. Um, still take great pride in that. Um, but I, I think, you know, certainly um, yourself, you know, Jim Kaiser, everybody, I, I can't I can't begin to think, you know, when you think about okay, I oversaw ultimately in the full time director role the fifteen of them. When you think about the Rooster Andrews, um, Chester Bradley, Scooter Alls, they we we created a board for those guys that uh, each of them have worked sixty Texas relays, right? The finish line is named after Rooster. So I'm a small part of the history of it. What I hope that we did was uh, embrace the people that have always supported it, but also added some people in that can continue to grow it uh, moving forward. And, and certainly uh, the Texas Track and Field Coaches Association is a huge part of that. I, our relationships here, who do we want to thank? The whole room tonight, right? Um, certainly the whole state, but um, again, just can go on and on. I don't know. I don't have enough thanks to give because it was such a team effort across the board to make it happen. Well, <clears throat> what you've done in 20 years is obviously spectacular. You're wearing a different shade of uh, orange now. It's still UT, but it's a different shade. And once again, Mr. Barr, congratulations on your induction into the Texas Track and Field Coaches Association Hall of Fame. Sir, thank you. Congratulations uh, to you with all you've done to, to elevate the sport in this state and nationally. Um, where we're standing tonight, really amazing. Um, but um, thanks for all you've done to support me and everything in the sport as well. Thank you, sir.